So if you ever come across the phrase, a victim's mindset, how about learned helplessness? A victim's mindset is a phrase that gets thrown around a hell of a lot to describe a person that essentially gets so stuck in their own victimhood that they don't at least appear to the outside world to be making any efforts or have any belief that they can ever get out of it. The phrase itself is quite stigmatic and if you go around calling someone a victim, they're probably not gonna thank you for it. It's probably also not gonna be the motivational tool that you hope it's gonna be. But what if I told you that behind that mentality, there is a whole psychological system that is essentially perpetuating that thing. And to a degree, the person is not as in control as what you think they ought to be. That thing is called learned helplessness, which is a term first coined by Martin Seligman and Stephen F. Mayer in 1967. Their research showed that helplessness is something that could be taught. If by exposing a person to a number of helpless situations, situations in which they had zero control, then when that person moves into situations where they do have control, that person is less likely to exhibit it, if not unlikely whatsoever. Their initial research is on animals, and if you wanna know about the full experiment, you can find that out from another video. But warning, it does involve as most experiments on animals do, animal cruelty. The problem with learned helplessness comes in the form of once a person believes that they are helpless in certain situations, that belief then trickles down and makes them think that they are helpless in all situations. Now, if a person believes that they are helpless in a situation, that will completely and utterly change the level of effort, if any, that they put into trying to overcome that situation. It can lead to an extremely defeatist attitude, and if a person doesn't try, well, they're most likely not going going to get any positive result. As such, this thing tends to go around in a circle because they believe that they will not be able to impact it, they don't try to impact it, and because it doesn't get impacted, that then confirms the belief. It is an insidious and horrible position for a person to be stuck in. What's made worse nowadays is the fact that that learned helplessness happens to be trickling into the influencers and such on the internet. Posts where people actually complain about how things are constantly seem to be getting a lot more traction nowadays, especially in the wake of people calling out positivity as being toxic positivity. And if someone is in the mindset of thinking that all positivity is toxic positivity, well, the answer to learned helplessness is probably not going to be one that they pick up too readily. Because Seligman's research didn't stop there. In further tests on humans, he found that people that identify as optimists actually built up somewhat of an immune system against learned helplessness. You could subject that person to situations where they have no control. And instead of seeing that as well, I don't have control in any situation. They saw that situation as isolated. Kind of like the difference between thinking I failed versus I'm a failure. I failed means I failed and I can go on to do better next time. I'm a failure means I failed and because I'm a failure, I will continue to fail in future attempts. Therefore, what's the point in even trying? Now, of course, if you're sat there thinking, but I'm not an optimist, so I do not have immunity on this, the research didn't stop there. Seligman went on to actually write a book called Learned Optimism, in which he talks about how optimism itself is not something that we are inherently born with, we do or we don't have. It is also something that is learned. Now, as my trauma-informed self, I have to put my own two pennies worth in here and say that chances are we learned optimism or we learned pessimism in a similar sort of way, in the fact that if you experienced a lot of trauma, you are more likely to have learned pessimism. If you experienced lesser trauma, then you are more likely to be more of an optimist. And I say more likely because none of these things are guaranteed. So where does that leave us now? Well, by bringing in another psychologist, Dr. Carol Dweck, the author of the book Mindset, where essentially the phrase mindset was, you know, if not born, at least made popular. She talks about the concept of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Now, I think you should probably read this book. It's amazing. However, I'm gonna give you the big spoiler that I took away from the whole thing. The idea of a fixed mindset is that you get stuck in your ways and that you do not grow, you don't think about things differently, you have a way that you think about things and that process is set 
it's done. Whereas a growth mindset is you are open to change, open to new ideas, and open to the possibility of things potentially changing for both the better and the worse. But the big takeaway I took from this book is that a fixed mindset doesn't mean it is fixed permanently. It just means that is the current mindset that you are in right now. You are not destined to have a fixed mindset forever. You are not destined to be a pessimist forever if you are in a fixed mindset or a pessimistic mindset right now. A growth mindset can be learned and optimism as well can be learned. And these things are actually worth learning. Now again, we get faced with the idea of toxic positivity here. Is this saying, well, if you just think that everything's going to be better, it will indeed be better? No, that would be toxic positivity. This is more realistic positivity in the fact that if we accept that there is both bad and good in things, rather than just the toxic negativity of thinking it's completely powerless, I'm completely powerless, nothing can be changed. We are looking instead of looking at one side or the other of the same coin here, of actually finding that realistic side in the middle. Well, realistic but erring towards the side of optimism, which is not the same of just think positive and it will all work out. It's more a case of if we think that we can do things, we try that little bit harder. We work that little bit better. We go into a situation thinking that it's possible that the outcome could be better. Therefore, our input tends to be better. Therefore, our outcomes tend to be better. There are no guarantees in this. It's not you do that and you will definitely get it. However, if you do go into things in that negative space of thinking, I have no control here, unless something out of your control happens to roll the dice in your favor, you're probably going to continue to get those negative outcomes. So how do we cultivate this optimist's mindset? Well, it comes down to actually, instead of just looking for all the bad and trying to say there's all the good, is actually looking for opportunities to find some good in the situation, some positive in that situation. And using that as a way to actually prove to yourself, if not that the whole world is a positive place, which spoiler alert, it isn't, at least there is positivity in this world. At least there is control in situations. It's not a case of moving from I have zero control over anything to I have 100% control over everything because ultimately that's just going to set you up for failure and probably put you back to exactly where you are right now. Instead, it's looking at situations and saying, what can I change? What can I impact? How could I impact this situation? What can I do in this situation to make a change, however small? And from that point, by teaching yourself that you can have 1%, 5%, 10% impact, and then results start coming in from that, using those results to confirm the belief that you do have power, that you do have agency, that you are capable of change. And then using that new belief as the opportunity to springboard you to maybe 15%, 20%, 50% and from there who knows where you might go as always I will say that this is simple but not easy and I respect that I'm not saying that by suddenly knowing this you're going to be in a significantly better position to be able to implement all of it it is going to take work and there probably will be failure along the way but again it's not getting into that mindset of by failing or stumbling or falling back that you are inherently a failure those are two completely different things as a final note, I would say to look at what you are consuming, because I have seen a growing trend of social media influencers that literally just talk about the problems in situations and never really offer anything. And that can be a very validating thing sometimes. Someone else sees the problem that you see and they put it eloquently into words and you vibe with that. I get it. Like I've put those posts up myself and I see that they engage with other people a lot more than putting positivity out into the world. The issue with that is, well, if we agree that toxic positivity exists, We've got to be open to the idea that toxic negativity exists too. And that is a negativity that instead of giving you the space to vent or the space to rant, and then you feel better for it afterwards, it just creates a situation where those around you and you reinforce each other's negativity and feel worse and feel less empowered coming out of it. In sort of a way, it's a learned helplessness by proxy. So I'm not gonna sit here and say who and who not to follow, that's on you, but ask yourself the question, overall, 
does this help? And I don't mean does it help in the short term, makes you feel good in the moment. I mean, in your big picture, in your long term trajectory, is the stuff that you're consuming, are the people that you're spending time listening to, helping you to get to where you want to be? Only you can answer that question. Anyway, I will leave it there. If you want to check out the podcast that is in the link below, there is a longer discussion on this. And if you ever want to have live discussions like this with me and my community, then come along to twitch.tv slash Mindset by Dave, where we have these kind of discussions every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Hopefully I'll see you down there.